Good afternoon everyone, my name is Baz Kinder and the purpose really of today's session is to show you how PMOs can get better visibility of Agile projects but are being managed via Visual Studio Team Foundation Server and also better visibility of uh, resource utilization. So really today's focus is a high level overview of project server and TFS integration. Uh, my expectation being that uh, you will have had some experience or some exposure to one or the other, because again, it is going to be a very high level overview of the integration itself. Uh, we are going to be touching upon uh, waterfall projects, agile projects, but again, today's session will not be going into detail into those frameworks. Uh, it's really uh, focused on the technology for today. So, uh, the agenda for today, I'll start off by giving you a brief overview of who Wellington are. Uh, I'll talk about the pains uh, that many PMOs and uh, even software developers will be encountering. Uh, and then we will talk about the benefits that the solution can provide. And I'll provide a live demonstration of the solution, the integration in, in operation. And I'll also show you some of the future roadmap. Uh, which which includes quite a few areas that are focused upon Agile. So Wellington, we are very much a specialist project management company that also offers a wide range of technical services as well. Uh, so at a very high level, we offer three particular areas of services, consulting, training, and recruitment. Within the consulting side, not only do we help organizations to set up PMOs, uh, help instill project management methodology. We also deploy uh, solutions like Microsoft SharePoint and Microsoft Project Server and Project Online. Uh, within the UK, we are one of the top partners on the PPM front. Uh, we also provide a wide range of training services. Uh, we offer a lot of corporate customized training courses, all of which are accredited by the APM. Uh, last but not least, we are also a specialist uh, recruitment agency. So if you've got any requirements for uh, permanent contract or interim project management professionals, then again, we can help. Just to give you an idea of some of the clients we've worked with over the last few years, you can see a, a range of uh, organizations on the screen right now. And one of the things that I would uh, stress is that we work across all verticals. We've worked with uh, organizations that uh, you might classify as SMEs, right the way through to multinational organizations. And again, we provide a full end-to-end -end service offering that uh, really covers all bases within project management. So why are we here today? Well, really we're here today because um, many organizations experience uh, what we call islands of data. Uh, on the one hand, you've got project managers, and project managers like using their own specific tools like Microsoft Project. Uh, you've also got software developers, and uh, you can see we've got a uh, software developer there wearing the compulsory set of headphones that they always do. Uh, and, and they all work using their respective tools. So project managers are using Project, and you've got your software developers using tools like Visual Studio Team Foundation Server. And they also follow their own frameworks, their own methodologies for managing projects. You've got project managers that typically follow a uh, waterfall approach, and then you've got uh, development teams that are typically managing projects in a agile framework. Um, so what you really end up with is uh, a lack of resource and progress visibility, uh, because often the two systems are disjointed. So we're going to be talking now about Project Server and how it merges with Visual Studio Team Foundation Server and what the processes uh, are, are like as well. So once you've got integration in place, it, it's really quite straightforward. The project manager um, sets up an enterprise project within Project Server. They then define the deliverables within the project schedule. The deliverables might be features or user stories. Uh, and once they've done that, they then publish the plan to Project Server. And what then happens in the background is a synchronization to Team Foundation Server. And once that synchronization takes place, the team leads can then review all of the deliverables within their uh, tool, which is Visual Studio. And they can flesh them out, add uh, further information like tasks and uh, user stories. They can assign resources. They can estimate the time that it'll take to complete as well. Now, when all of these changes are made within uh, Team Foundation Server, you can also then synchronize those back to Project Server. Now, the way in which I'll be doing the demonstration today is that this integration, uh, in fact, not really the integration, the approval of these new tasks that are added, uh, the project manager has to view what these updates are before accepting them. It's only once they're accepted that they then display within Project Server itself. Uh, as well as assigning tasks, because all of this information is then synchronized back to Project Server, uh, what you do also find is that uh, you've got resource rollup uh, in play as well. So any resources that are being assigned via TFS, uh, you will see what the uh, resource utilization looks like through the Project, uh, sorry, project Server Resource Center. 
So that's one way of uh, using this uh, integration. You can also work the other way around. You might spin it around and you might say that the development team leads uh, will actually be defining all of the details within their tool, uh, Visual Studio Team Foundation Server, and that what they're doing is providing visibility to the PMO but the PMO doesn't really have as much interaction, but they are still getting really, really good visibility of what's going on. Within TFS itself, you do have various uh, templates available out of the box, Scrum, CMMI, and Agile as well. Uh, today, for the demo that I'll be doing, we'll be looking at the Agile template. So we are going to go on to the live demonstration. We're not going to uh, have many, many slides uh, popping up today. So as part of a demonstration, I'm going to show you how the project manager would create work items in project. So I'll then show you how the team lead within Visual Studio uh, TFS would view these uh, items and how they can flesh them out with further information. We'll then have a look at uh, the synchronization taking place in the sense that uh, I'll show you how the project manager uh, then gets visibility of the work that's been done in TFS. And we'll have a look at how resource rollup works as well. So I've now switched over to my demo environment and uh, what you can actually see on the screen right now is Project Professional. If I was to uh, kind of uh, move that down, you can see that in the background, we've also got Open Project Web App, uh, which is really the interface into Project Server, uh, the web-based interface, uh, that is. And soon I'll be going into Visual Studio Team Foundation Server as well. But uh, within our plan that, uh, that I have open right now in Project Professional, you can see that I've already created a number of user stories. So here we've got users can add items to a shopping cart. And uh, there are other user stories that you can see visible as well. And uh, the tasks that you see listed out beneath these user stories, these have all been entered actually through Visual Studio as opposed to uh, right here in Project. Here you can also see the work item ID as it appears in TFS. Uh, and you can see here that we've assigned some resources. And here we've got a uh, selector that uh, allows the project manager really to determine what they want to synchronize to TFS. And here you can also see we've actually defined the types of uh, work items that we're creating here. So we, we've out the box uh, got bug, task, and user story. You can define other items there as well. So if you want to um, create epics or features, you could do that very, very easily. Uh, what I will do now is go into Visual Studio and uh, show you how this information appears within that particular solution. So here I'm going to open up the project. And uh, if you bear with me, here we are. Uh, so right now I'm on the user story screen. So again, just to uh, put this into a bit of perspective, in the background I've got Project Professional. This is the tool that really the project managers would be using. And uh, in the foreground I've got the uh, solution of choice uh, for software development teams where you can manage your code and uh, your tasks as well. So here I've got my user stories. These have all been fed through Project uh, Server. Now I could, if I want to, create a new user story here and that would then synchronize back to Project Server as well. If I click into the first iteration, you can see that I've got a couple of user stories there, and uh, this is where I've added tasks into these items as well. We can see the resource assignments, and uh, I've got a second iteration there as well. But going back to iteration one, uh, we see the overview there, and if I want to, I can go into my board display, and here see the items uh, displayed there. But again, today, uh, primarily because of time constraints, this isn't really a detailed overview of uh, Visual Studio Team Foundation Server. This is really a, um, a demonstration of the integration in, in action. Uh, what I'm going to do now is actually go back to my project environment and I'm going to create another user story. So let's create a, an example one. Uh, users will be able to, uh, you'll realize that I can't actually spell when I'm uh, multitasking and talking at the same time. Uh, log in via LinkedIn. So I've created a user story there. In fact, uh, let me just move that out. And um, I'm going to assign a resource to that as well. Let's assign this to uh, Fabian. And let's say that we are going to synchronize this back to TFS. And let's specify that this is actually a user story. Now, what I'm going to do is just go to File. And uh, I'm going to publish this. And here in the uh, lower right-hand side, you can see there's a bit of a status update saying that Publish is now 78% complete, and pretty soon we'll see Publish completed successfully. Now, if I go back to Visual Studio Team Foundation Server and go into Stories, you can see that the user story that I've just added has now appeared. So there you can see users will be able to log in via LinkedIn. 
If I double click into that, I open up the information window and uh, this is where I can actually determine which iteration this will take place in. Uh, so let's say this is part of uh, iteration one. Uh, in fact, no, I've changed my mind. Uh, that's part of iteration two. And uh, I'm going to save and close. Now, when I go to iteration one, you will see that that doesn't appear there. But if I go to iteration two, you can see that there we uh, have the brand new user story that we've just added in. I'll be very creative and I'll call this task one. And I'm going to assign this to, uh, let's say we're going to assign this to James. And uh, this is where we are now going to estimate effort. So one of the things uh, that I didn't point out was that back in Project Server, I didn't estimate effort. So let's say this is going to take 24 hours. Got 24 hours remaining, and so far we haven't completed any of it because, you know, we've not got that far yet. And if I click on this little tab for Project Server, this is where I can decide whether I want to synchronize this back uh, to Project Server or whether I just want to keep this within the realms of Visual Studio Team Foundation Server. Now, even if I didn't share this back uh, to Project Server, you would still see the roll-up information being represented within the user story that we've created. So you would see that the summary task of user story within project itself would say that this task is going to take 24 hours. But for the uh, sake of a demonstration, I am going to synchronize this back. And uh, I'm going to save and close. Now, this takes a few moments, so uh, I could just talk for a while. But uh, what I'll do is I'll go into Project uh, Web App. So this is Project Web App, which is the uh, web-based interface into Project Server. Now, if I extend this out, I'm going to click onto approvals because now that I've added a task in, the way in which we've set up this particular uh, integration uh, is that um, the project manager has to approve new tasks that are added. Now, you can bypass this and you could say that any tasks that are added are automatically accepted, uh, but that's not the way that we've got this particular instance configured today. Um, so what you will see is that uh, here we've got the user story that we had uh, added in earlier. Uh, the reason that's popping up is because the resource has been assigned. And here you also see the new task request popping up as well. Now what I'm going to do is actually select all of these items. So we've got other task updates there that have been submitted previously. And I'm going to accept. I'm not going to type in any comments because as uh, you saw earlier, I cannot multitask. Okay, so we've accepted all of those updates. And if I go back into Project Professional, in fact, what I will need to do is just close out of this and open that back up. So I'm going to open that, um, that demo project back up. And when we do that, you can see that uh, there's our user story at the top and there's task one, which we assigned earlier. And you will also see that the task, uh, sorry, the resource summon that we created uh, is reflected right here in this environment. So very useful. And uh, if I was now to go into uh, Project uh, Server again, I could go into the Resource Center. And here you can see that I've already got some resources uh, already selected. And these resource assignments that you're seeing here, they've all been made via Visual Studio Team Foundation Server. So I've got these resources selected. Let's select them in as well. And let's have a look at what they're working on. So I can click into resource assignments. And when I do that, you can see all of the projects that they've been assigned to. In fact, it's only the uh, single project that we've got set up, which is PWA demo project. But you can see which um, tasks they're working on. And if I go into resource availability, you also see there that uh, we've got a visual representation of all of the work that's been assigned to these individuals. So all of these individuals have been given a uh, color key. We've got view options we've specified down there as well. On this graph that we're seeing, we've got this black line that's representing the amount of work, the, um, the capacity that these individuals have to do work on a given day. These bars that you see represent the amount of work that individuals have been assigned. So we see that Glenn uh, John's got some work assigned to him. We've got Melanie's been assigned some work. Back to my uh, slide deck, and I want to share with you guys the uh, future roadmap that Microsoft have uh, recently announced that features a large number of enhancements when it comes to managing agile projects. So there are enhancements uh, within the Project Desktop application and uh, within Project Online, which I'll talk about shortly. Importantly, you'll also be able to do integration with third-party applications like Jira. 
The demo that I did today was really focusing on project server integration with Visual Studio Team Foundation Server. The project online application, which you can now get as part of Office 365, does not currently integrate with TFS, but that is on the cards. So this is project online, as you can see there, and we've got an option there to highlight a task and say that we'd like to manage this in Visual Studio. Furthermore, within the desktop application, so this is Project Pro for Office 365, Microsoft are including a brand new template for managing Agile projects. So if you select that template, it takes you through a brief wizard that allows you, if you want to, to connect to a tool like Visual Studio Online or to Jira. But this is all within Project Pro for Office 365, so the desktop application, the client application. And uh, we've got a screenshot there showing you how you can create a product backlog. And you can also easily break the uh, backlog down into a series of sprints. And uh, it's literally a case of clicking and dragging uh, any one of those items into the respective sprint. You'll also be able to assign resources from the enterprise resource pool. Microsoft are also going to provide some uh, new out-of-the-box reports that give you really rich insight into how uh, you're performing in that particular project. And I'm sure there will be other reports as well, but that's uh, what we have to share so far. And uh, again, as I mentioned earlier, you've also got the ability to connect to third-party applications like Jira. So this is something that's in the pipeline. I can't really give you a definitive timeline on when these new features will be available. So for, for now, you can today, if you've got Project Server in place, or if you've got Visual Studio Team Foundation Server in place, you can integrate straight away. But if you would like to integrate in the uh, online applications, that's on the cards. So really, that concludes uh, today's presentation. So I'd like to thank you all for your time.